Hey there, and thanks for tuning into my rambling about the Sunto Vertical. I haven't really heard much about what I consider to be one of the best fitness trackers out on the market as of the beginning of 2024. I'll begin with a consumer advice. Opt for the standard Sunto model over the solar version. Its battery life is already outstanding. With just occasional quick charges, it easily lasts even with the videos. The solar implementation and benefits are widely acknowledged, and now there's finally competition for Garmin. Previously, the sole user of this technology in its eyes and watches, but the battery life of the standard model is exceptional to say the least. In other words, this vertical is like a trunk on St. Patrick's Day, it can't give up. But now, let's address the weak point of this port watch. While its flaws are just a few, they may be crucial for you to consider before making a purchase. The very first is a direct consequence of its aforementioned enormous battery life. Sunto motto must be go big or go home, because this watch is so massive, it could double as a weight at the gym. This watch is huge, it's a tank of a tracker, come with its own postal code. And you're definitely gonna feel it on your wrist, especially if you choose to wear it for sleep tracking. Which brings me to the next point. Sleep tracking isn't great. It isn't even average. It really sucks. Not quite like that though. It sucks in a very Nordic, rigorous and professional manner. Not only is it lacking and inconsistent, but the reports provided afterward also leave much to be desired. Despite the hub otherwise captivating aesthetic and efficiency, perhaps the finest out there, it seems to have made the deliberate choice to overlook some of the most conspicuous sleep statistics. My humble advice, avoid wearing it at night and spare yourself the underwhelming recovery data that would inevitably follow. An only minor issue I found relates to the heart rate accuracy. It has a slight impact only during my strength training session, showing up to a 10% margin of error for me. Way more annoying was for me to repeatedly check which external device was I struggling to pair, and this appeared to be a common issue with whatever sensor one is trying to use. Another delightful inconvenience, should you dare remove it from your wrist, the display not only dim, but has the audacity to switch off and turn the nerve, particularly vexing when one simply wishes to steal a glance, perhaps after opting to forgo its company during a training session, such as rope skipping, and wanted to check the lapse time, or assess one proximity to a severe coronary event. But fear not, for in all other regards its visibility, particularly outdoors, remain unparalleled. Now, onto the reason that could lead you to buy this watch. Behold the build quality, a testament to Sunto craftsmanship, sapphire crystal and meticulous attention to details, from the reassuring click of the button to the sturdy watch lugs. In ink garment, clearly crafted in Finland without any implication of an Asian Oliver Twist. And if that's not impressive enough, but I won't get on my toes on right now. China's actually a free and loving country. That I'm out. Moving on to the next remarkable feature, mapping. Sunto has seamlessly integrated their well-established routing system. The hub, already straightforward to create and import route, now dazzles with the ability to display these very maps directly on the watch. In short, this new vertical is so great at routing and navigation, one may even stand a chance across country against a Mexican. To sum it up. If you're not sold on the size and wearability or on the mapping feature, go ahead and snack the already fantastic Sunto 9 Peak Pro. Land down here, the Peak Pro. Otherwise, it's a no-brainer. Go vertical with this vertical. Enjoy running. Bye.